Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. So the December update for Power BI is finally here and I'm excited to show you some of the cool features that have been released this month. When you launch Power BI, you are greeted with this screen over here which has two options to choose from. It, this is basically related to your pane arrangement. Now before the on object interaction features were made available, you had your data pane and build this visual pane stacked next to each other and whenever you would open a new pane like your select or your bookmark pane they would open right next to each other instead of swapping them like how it is happening right now but with this update you will be able to choose how you want your pane arrangement to look like so either you keep the setup which is basically swapping the panes based on the selection that you make from this section over here or you update the setup when you update the setup you basically have your build a visual and data tab open and now let's say I want to add another pane when I click on let's say format pane over here it's going to stack next to the open pane instead of swapping with the pane that is already open I'm glad that Microsoft has bought this feature back in Power BI for any reason if you do not like this setup you can always go back to your file go to your options and settings click on options under report settings you can uncheck the box here which says always open a new pane and click on OK and now when you click on another pane over here it is going to be swapped with the open pane rather than adding a new pane into your report. Another update that is seen this month is with the arrow buttons and the ellipses on these panes over here. So earlier when you click on the arrows over here you used to see these options like collapse, close, move to visual etc. But now when you click on these arrows it straight collapses and then if you want to close it you can close it from these ellipses over here and you can click on close. I was really missing this feature and it's nice to see this being available in this month's update. Now let's take a look at some of the styling options that have been made available within the column bar and the ribbon chart so let me quickly add country on my x-axis and item type on my y-axis and then bring in the total sales or total units sold over here and you see that I've created a column chart now let's head to the format tab over here wherein we will see some of the changes that have been added over here so under columns you see that there is now an option where you can control the transparency of the series now you can either increase the transparency at the entire series level or you can also choose a particular series for example baby food over here and you can increase the transparency to just reduce the transparency here for that particular series only the next option that is available here is is to add the border to the series and here you can choose the color you want for example if I go ahead with this pink over here I can increase the width and add that particular border to all of the series here and likewise I can also choose the series here if I want to just add border to a particular series now the next feature update over here is the layout section where you will be able to sort the columns here based on value for example if I turn on sort by value over here you see that the columns here within the item type or the country over here is getting sorted by value and then you also have the reverse order over here if you turn this on you will be able to sort the values in ascending order there's also an option where you get to choose the amount of space that you want between the categories for example right now it's set at 20 percent if i move this to about 40 percent you will see that there's a lot of space now created between the categories now if i change this to a stack chart you see if i go back to the layout over here you will see there's another option available for me to play around with which is space between the series now you can move the slider up over here to add space between the series and the max that you can go here up is up to about five pixels now this is a nice feature to have because it helps you differentiate between the categories now let's head to the next section and this is quite an important section and also is quite exciting because we've got more flexibility in terms of adding data labels to our charts. Now if I go to my data labels over here first of all you get to apply settings to either all the series or you can choose a particular series let's proceed with all for now and you can see that I have multiple options over here like I have title I have value I have detail over here now these are the three different options that we have to add in more data labels into our charts now the kind of information that you can display by using three of these options over here is only limited to your creativity now let me show you some of the examples how this works and let's see what 
information we will be able to add by using these options first of all the option here is the title option let's turn this on so when you turn on the title you will be able to see the series name now when you turn on the series name over here you can simply get rid of the legend that you have in your chart now we have our series name available right here and you can also play around with this for example let's go back to our data labels and over here from this drop down you can either choose to have your series name or you can also select custom over here where you will be able to create a label based on a measure now you can display whatever information that you want by creating a measure I have created a measure here called title let me quickly bring that title into my data section over here and you see that I have added a lot of information with just one single measure over here now if you take a look at the first line of label that is available over here I am displaying the category name and I'm saying units sold are 66,700 for the category baby food now the next section here is the value section if I turn this on by default it is going to consider the measure that we've added in our y-axis which is total unit sold now I'm already capturing this information in my title section so so I don't want to display total units sold here instead I have created another measure here called value label which will basically display the percentage so if I bring in the value label into my value section over here this is basically telling me that this year our unit sold in category baby food is up by 59.12 percent now likewise I also have one more field here to play around with and add in more information now I want to display how many units did I sell last year in the same period last year there is an option here which is percentage of total by default I'm going to select custom over here and for the detail label I have created another measure now with the help of this measure over here I'm able to display that for category baby food same period last year units sold were 41,900 only and then if you scroll down under layout over here you get to choose whether you want to show this on a multi line or you want this to be shown on a single line itself since I have a lot of information over here I might need to turn on overflow text let me search for overflow text over here and let me turn this on and you see that how all of that information is being displayed on one single line now this is good if you have very little information to display but multi line is something that I am looking forward for to be using in all of my charts and earlier if you had to create something like this you had to do a lot of work around and now you can simply create measures drag and drop them in their respective sections to be able to provide more insights into your data now let me show you another example that I have created wherein I'm displaying the total sales amount the number of units sold and also same period last year now this is possible only because of the extended customization available for data labels within these kind of charts so these were the features that I wanted to take you through in this month's update I hope you guys will be able to use this at your workplace and take your reports to next level so that's it guys in this particular tutorial I hope you enjoyed this tutorial you learned something new today please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials